how long has it been? Fifty-five years now. Started when I was fifteen, and I've been pretty consistent through those years. Quite consistent. Um, it's. I knew from the moment I had my first experience of being guided into what was mantra meditation then, that I'd be doing this for the rest of my life. For me, initially, it was the it was the kind of the quelling of of anxiety. Um, I think anxiety. I'm kind of wired for anxiety. So on a very practical and a pragmatic level, it's very, very effective. You know, as when I learned mantra meditation, the more dynamic your rest, the more dynamic your activity. And I noticed that after I would sit and close my eyes for 20 minutes, I was more awake and more clear, and I had a better sense of <clears throat> who I was and what I wanted. And it just kept growing. I had an experience on a, a month-long retreat, a month-long silent retreat, and I was about maybe 10 days or two weeks into it. And I started um, developing some really intense pain, kind of like slightly above my shoulders. And it would get very, very intense, and then I'd move, and I'd get a little chiropractic adjustment, like a literal crack, 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 and then it would dissipate, and then it would start to reform again. And it got more and more and more chronic. And it began to not only unsettle me, but to really deeply unnerve me. You know, I, I got scared. Uh, I'm trained in yoga, and I've taught yoga for years and years and years. So I pulled out all my tricks. You know, I tried visualization. I tried, you know, breathing techniques. I tried doing intensive postures to see if I could align the energy. I tried deep relaxations to see if that could happen. I tried visualization. I tried everything I could to to make it go away. And in an interview with one of the teachers, I was describing what I was doing. And he said, maybe you're dealing with this superficially. Maybe you ought to try just being with it. And somehow that hadn't really occurred to me, <laughs> as obvious as the pointing out instruction was. And so I decided I was just going to be with it if it killed me. And as I sat with an intention to be still, even though there was so much movement and I wanted to keep moving to try to alleviate it, I just stayed still. And I practiced noting, just labeling my experience. And so I was just giving, just giving a few words to try and keep my attention on the sensation. And so the words were, you know, waves of pain and, and kind of red hot pain. Then it shifted to like a, a white pain and then then a really a, a point of white pain. And then I remember saying to myself, this is like the point of a knife. This feels like I'm being stabbed in the back. And, and with that, my eyes just opened and I had this a recall of an experience maybe a year earlier of, of a, what felt to me a very deep betrayal. And, and with that came a whole flush of emotions. And I continued to try and name them as they arose, which was first just anger. And then under the anger was, a, was just a feeling of revenge. You know, and under the revenge was a feeling of, of, of shame and humiliation. And after a while, the shame and humiliation you know, fell away to, to just the sense of really deep sadness. And the sadness began to fall away. And with that came a, a little, almost a sense of empathy for the other person. And then that just sort of opened to, to space. And when I checked back in, the sensations were gone. And they were replaced by sort of free-flowing endorphins. The insight for me was the difference between trying to control or manipulate my experience and the power of just bringing pure awareness to it. Mm -hmm.